Within the biotech uh, healthcare sector, we can look at different subsectors. And so one of the key subsectors is pharmaceuticals or small molecule drugs. And so these are what we think of as our traditional pharmaceuticals, things like aspirin, things that have been around for decades or even, uh, you know, a hundred years in the case of aspirin. And so these are often orally available. Uh, they are small. Their structure is relatively simple. We can actually identify where every atom in that molecule is relative to every other atom. Uh, patients typically take these orally and they can be absorbed or actually enter patient cells. So they can interact with proteins and enzymes inside of the patient's uh, cells. Uh, in contrast, we have large molecule drugs, also referred to as biologics. Biologics have a much more complex structure, and this is because they are actually proteins made by living cells. So small molecule drugs we can synthesize in the lab, mix chemicals together, together and produce this relatively simple structure. Large molecule drugs cannot be synthesized in the lab. We have to program living cells to produce a highly complex uh, protein therapeutic. Um, as a consequence of this complex structure, these drugs are not able to be given orally, or at least not yet, although there are companies working on technology to, to enable that. But currently, large molecule drugs must be taken via an injection or an infusion to avoid the digestive tract because their function really depends on maintaining this highly complex three-dimensional structure. And so, uh, just to summarize here, the key differences between large molecule biologic drugs and small molecule therapeutics are how they're made. Biologics have to be made by a living cell or a living organism. Small molecule drugs can be chemically synthesized in the lab. Uh, so the manufacture of small molecule drugs is more straightforward. Uh, we can establish SOPs that can be used routinely uh, by different companies to produce similar structures, whereas uh, large molecule drugs, uh, there can be nuances, uh, slight changes in manufacturing conditions can have a significant impact on the shape and therefore the function of this product. Um, their stability is also very different. So if you think about, for example, if you have aspirin or Advil at home, this is a small molecule drug. You can store this in your medicine cabinet for months, perhaps even years at a time, and it won't lose its efficacy. With a large molecule drug, that complex three-dimensional structure is much less stable. Uh, most biologics have to be refrigerated at all times, um, or they will lose that three-dimensional structure, um, and again, therefore their function, so much less stable. Um, and corresponding to that complex structure, we cannot uh, clarify, we cannot analyze and define the structure as clearly as we can for the uh, small molecule drug. So that's why if you see an actual chemical structure, as we see on my slide here for the small molecule drug, um, you know we're talking about a small molecule drug. Um, if you're looking at a product information sheet, for example, with a large molecule therapeutic, we just don't see a chemical structure drawn out because we don't actually know the exact chemical structure. We can get a general idea of the shape of the protein, but not where every single atom in that molecule is. Thanks for watching.